Hey guys, I just opened a glass bottle with cobalt carbonyl for the first time ever, and you can see its orange crystals oxidize to carbonate very quickly in air, changing the color to violet in the process. On top of that, cobalt carbonyl crystals are pyrophoric, so to prevent them from undesired combustion, they are wetted in hexane. That's why you could see a note corresponding to that on the label. These macro shots allow you to see these crystals go bad really fast when I leave them in the open. Like all metal carbonyls, cobalt carbonyl is a flammable reagent. It can easily catch fire from any fire source, which results in the formation of cobalt monoxide that you can attract with a magnet. If we are to decompose cobalt carbonyl in air at elevated temperatures, we'll get a fine powder of cobalt oxide the color of which varies depending on oxide film thickness. But if we create inert atmosphere during cobalt carbonyl decomposition, we'll get extra pure cobalt. This spider web-like substance is actually extra pure cobalt. We can check it with a magnet. And these are the crystals of extra pure cobalt formed at the bottom of the test tube. Now let's add some hydrochloric acid there. Cobalt starts to react with hydrochloric acid right away with the formation of cobalt chloride, which is responsible for the resulting blue color.
You could notice just now that adding water to the blue solution of cobalt chloride and hydrochloric acid made the solution turn pink. Why did this happen? The thing is, cobalt dichloride itself is blue. In water, this salt dissociates into a cobalt cation and a chloride anion. Cobalt cation is pink, hence the solution turned pink as well. However, if we add hydrochloric acid to the pink solution of cobalt chloride, equilibrium of the dissociation reaction of cobalt chloride shifts to the left side to form a cobalt chloride molecule. These molecules make the solution blue. When the blue solution is diluted with water, the dissociation of cobalt chloride molecules increases, and the solution turns pink as a result. Commercial samples of cobalt chloride are usually the hexahydrate, which is one of the most commonly used cobalt compounds in the lab. Hexahydrate is pink. But let's see what happens if we add some thionyl chloride to it. Keeping a bottle with thionyl chloride closed for a long time leads to the accumulation of gaseous products that mark its slow decomposition. Once the bottle is opened, those products will shoot out of it rapidly. So I add phenyl chloride to pink cobalt chloride hexahydrate, and it instantly turns blue. This has to do with the fact that phenyl chloride reacts with the water this salt contains, and together they form hydrochloric acid, which, as I explained earlier, makes the color change from pink to blue. But that's not the end of the reaction just yet. Gradually reacting with hydrated water, phenyl chloride is able to dry pink cobalt chloride hexahydrate to purple monohydrate. And this is what cobalt chloride anhydrous looks like. The anhydrous form is a blue crystalline solid. Its blue granules resemble blueberry on these micro shots. By the way, previous reaction with phenyl chloride is quite endothermic, but temperature drops below zero during the reaction. With nitric acid, cobalt carbonyl instantly decomposes with the release of nitrogen and carbon oxides. Cobalt carbonyl is also rapidly decomposed by halogens, but to make the reaction proceed less violently, we can use cobalt carbonyl solution in benzene. Thank you. 
adding cobalt carbonyl to pyridinate room temperature causes a violent reaction that ends when the test tube gets slightly heated. Organic peroxides oxidize liquid metal carbonyl so violently, this reaction is actually used to prove the presence of peroxides in hydrocarbons. One such organic peroxide is this third butyl hydroperoxide. It's one of the few reagents to have a maximum hazard in FPA rating. To reduce the risks, commercial samples like this one are made available as concentrated solutions in water. For example, this one is a 70% solution. With solid metal carbonyls, such as our cobalt carbonyl sample, terbutyl hydroperoxide reacts not so violently, yet it still decomposes the sample into cobalt oxide. But if the metal carbonyl is liquid, which is the case for nickel carbonyl or iron carbonyl that you see right now, one tiny drop of terbutyl hydroperoxide is all it takes to start the carbonyl violent decomposition reaction. While I was making this video, I decided to test the reaction between chromyl chloride and iron pentacarbonyl that was not described anywhere, and the result was a big surprise to me. I expected this reaction to cause the combustion of iron pentacarbonyl, but instead it resulted in the formation of an odd-shaped porous mass. Let me know what this mass looks like to you in the comments.
Solid cobalt carbonyl dissolves perfectly in liquid iron pentacarbonyl, resulting in the formation of black solution, the reactivity of which increases in the process. The reaction between this solution and terbutyl hydroperoxide is much more visual. You just saw me adding peroxide to carbonyl, and here I'll do the exact opposite of that and add carbonyl to peroxide. Sodium and potassium peroxides ignite liquid carbonyls on contact with it. Now take a look at these peculiar masses that result from the reaction of chromyl chloride with a solution of cobalt carbonyl in iron pentacarbonyl. A few viewers from the community tab comments told me they saw an octopus here. And what did you see? Perhaps it doesn't look that beautiful, but we zoom in on it enough we may see some truly amazing sights. That's it for today. I leave you with these chemistry works of art alone. See you in the next video.